Today we've got a different type of sermon. As a matter of fact, it's less a sermon and it's more dialogue as we prepare to serve in the name of Christ. And so we are going to be uh, doing two parts in readings. I'm going to be sharing a first reading actually from uh, Exodus, which is part of the call story of Moses. And from there I will be giving a short review and asking some questions for all of you to be discussing with one another for a few minutes and then providing your feedback to those questions. After we've done that, then Pastor Jackie will also read from a reading in 1 Corinthians and we'll do the same with her reading. So the first reading, which is called to serve, uh, found in Moses' call story in Exodus 3, verses 1 through 17. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of the fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way of the Egyptians who are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you shall say to the Israelites. I am has sent, you to, has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt, and I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. This text <clears throat> is not the full call story of Moses, but it's about half of it. We have an average guy doing his average job in the mundane and daily routines in which he witnesses the extraordinary in a burning bush. The average guy stood in the presence of our extraordinary God and listened with jaw-dropping disbelief when the extraordinary called the ordinary 
into a role above and beyond his imagination. Imagine you or I being called to confront Kim Jong-un from North Korea. You or I being called to stand up to the leader of ISIS. That is what happened in this call story. An average guy in Moses being called to stand up to the Pharaoh of Egypt. Is it any wonder then that he made excuses? Excuses like, who am I? What authority do I have? What if they don't believe me? Are you serious, God? I can't speak eloquently to these people. I'm a shepherd. Take someone else. Sometimes we forget that God is greater than our perceptions and our limitations. And sometimes it's hard to understand that God has created each and every one of us with unique gifts and talents, with purpose and with a calling. A calling that will go beyond our understanding. What is your calling? What is your individual calling? So I would like you to take two or three minutes right now and visit with the people around you. And yes, you're having permission to talk in church during a sermon. Take two or three minutes and visit with one another. And I want you to think about times in which you may have been afraid to take a risk for something that you were called to. What may have been your greatest fear of risking for something big? What prevented you from leaving your comfortable yet limited comfort zones? Share those thoughts with one another for two or three minutes and then I'm going to ask you to throw some of those ideas back. <laughs> 